the Australia Australasian, not even just Australian, the Australasian Sugar Artist of the Year in 2021, no less. What a title, honestly. That's just that's extremely, extremely cool. But yes, as you heard, Nicole inspired by some of her beautiful surroundings. And my goodness, Ford has a lot of them. It has actually a lot of green space, in fact. Um, nearly a third of this suburb is green space and it's surrounded virtually on three sides by the Mulligan's Flat Woodland Sanctuary, which means there's a lot of very beautiful nature right on people's doorsteps and sometimes, I dare say, literally on people's doorsteps as well. To learn a little bit more um, about that and some of the things that people might be able to see, Neil Hermes is with us, the president of the Canberra Ornithologists Group. Hi, Neil, how are you? I'm well, Anna. I'm uh, out bird watching, which is good for me. Oh, what a delight. And thank you so much for taking a little bit of time away from it to talk no, to us. No worries. Indeed, a happy Wrens Day to you. Um, is the is Mulligan's Flat a bit of a hotspot for Wrens? Well, uh, Mulligan's Flat, as some of your listeners will know that there's an international bird database which is run out of Cornell University in the United States. And people put in records for the birds that they see. And uh, over time, lots of records are recorded for any particular geographic area. In the ACT, we have about 700 different hotspots where things are measured. Mulligan's Flat is the second highest hotspot in the ACT. So it is uh, epicentre bird watching uh, central uh, for many species, almost 200 species of birds recorded in Mulligan's Flat Reserve. So uh, wow. an extraordinary spot for birds. Absolutely incredible. What are some of the, your favourites that you've seen there, Neil? Well, look, I thought just for fun, I would, uh, I would find the ones that start with F because there's 196 species, including things like flycatchers and fantails um, and fryer birds. Um, so there's lots of F birds um, in, in uh, Mulligan's Flat. Um, and of course, Mulligan's Flat's famous for the superb parrots and um, uh, stone curlews. Uh, which have been, uh, the stone curlew has been re-released into uh, the reserve, a, a large, uh, almost non-flying, um, um, ground-dwelling nocturnal bird, which you could literally have turn up on your doorstep in Ford because they do sort of bound out of the reserve and, and end up stalking around in the gardens of, uh, of houses nearby. Mm. Um, a very strange-looking bird, uh, highly endangered around the country, but... Uh, unfortunately, we have now reintroduced them to mulligans. So these are, and superb parrots, of course, are, are well known uh, in the area around Ford, uh, a, a spectacular endangered species of parrot that we that we have. And they're very commonly seen in Ford, which is wonderful for people in Ford. What a treat, really, to have it such is. endangered it birds is. literally just flying around. <laughs> exactly. Now, it is famous for being a, a one of the largest uh, box grass uh, grassy woodlands uh, in conservation uh, anywhere in the country. It's a very large area of, of grassy woodland. But in Mulligan's Flat, there's also a spectacular dam, a very large wetland, and that gets lots of interesting birds too. And I was looking through the list of Fs for there, and a very rare duck is sometimes found on that dam at Mulligan's, and that's the freckled duck, hmm. uh, yet another F bird. Um, so uh, a very rare species of duck. Not too many of them being seen around in the last year because they're all out in the inland. There's been so much water elsewhere that they haven't needed the refuges here on the on the tablelands. Um, but yeah, another, yet another bird that could easily be seen uh, at the right time, you know, and conditions in Mulligan's Flat. How important is it for these bird species, particularly these very rare and endangered species, Neil, to have a a refuge like Mulligan's Flat? Well, it's very important, particularly for some. Now, some birds can, you know, can put up with, you know, quite a lot of disturbance, and they can survive in places like Black Mountain Reserve and and, and Mount Taylor, and and even in our suburban gardens. So we'll get lots of birds like eastern rosellas and others that are very adaptable. But for some species, a place like Mulligan's Flat, particularly with the predator-proof fence that they've got around it, it's now a highly valuable site, um, and. And there are certain birds that only use that sort of grassy woodland, which are now very, very rare uh, and becoming more and more endangered. Species that I'm thinking of like white faces, diamond firetails, um, brown tree creepers. There's a suite of birds that really do depend on a place like Mulligan. And the fact that it's fenced 
uh, and that the predators are removed is an absolute bonus for some of those species. Neil, tell me about um, what an average kind of birding expedition to Mulligan's Flat looks like for you. Does it does it change depending on what kind of bird you're hoping to spot? Do you have special equipment that you'd use? What does it look like when you head out? Okay, so typically you would go out in the early morning. Um, birds are more active in the morning than, than uh, at other times of the day. So I would arrive out there, you know, 7 o'clock in the morning, 8 o'clock in the morning, uh, the equipment I'd have would I'd essentially have a pair of binoculars because so many birds are small and at a distance, you really do need a, a pair of binoculars. But the most important thing to do is to be is to be move through the bush quietly, and and listen more than more than uh, than look, because many birds give themselves away, especially in a woodland, uh, by their calls, and that's how you'll first see them. So moving slowly, perhaps uh, you know I might spend a, a couple of hours moving through the bush. Um, I might see 30, 40, 50 species pot- potentially if I'm very lucky. Um, but uh, moving through the bush quietly uh, with a pair of binoculars. Um, and look, uh, sometimes it's just for sheer p- the pleasure of it. Other times there might be a purpose like trying to you know, count certain species and being part of some sort of active citizen science project of which I'm involved in many. The um, sanctuary and the nature reserve, of course, as you say, very important for some species that really need them. Some others can, you know, go and enjoy some of the wetter conditions. We know that the sanctuary has also benefited from those conditions. How are the bird species doing, Neil, in your experience after a couple of wetter years? Are you seeing more around? Well, the the pattern in Canberra just generally, and aside from just mulligans, is that birds this year have had huge success with their breeding. So whereas we've had, you know, a number of years when it's been dry and we've had fires, etc., and and breeding hasn't been very successful this year birds have been able to have you know where they might have had two or three young come out of the nest they might have four or five uh, whereas they might have had one brood in a season they might now have two so that the production of young uh, under these sorts of circumstances there's just so much more food about there's so much more grass there's so much more so many more insects so you know there's a lot more um, biological material out there for the birds to feed on. So the birds are being, you know, are having a, a bond, a, a, an absolute bonanza breeding season in conditions like this. And they need it because in drought years, of which we get many as well, they're not so successful. So they need to keep the population going. They need, um, you know, they need these good years. Having seen them through those struggling years, it must be really lovely, really gratifying, Neil, to see them doing so well comparatively. It is. It's great to see. Um, it's great to see the uh, you know the the, the uh, adult birds with these big broods um, being successful and 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 them surviving. Many young birds don't survive in a given season, but this year, you know, whereas they might have had three or four chicks come out of a nest, and in a typical year, only one would survive. You know, more than six months. Uh, in these sorts of conditions, it looks like they're being able to keep you know many more of their young alive during the, the course of the season. Um, and that's that. Yeah, it's it's wonderful to see that. But it is just the cycle, of course. It's mm. what we it's what we expect to see. And I'm I'm not a young thing anymore. And <laughs> I have seen these cycles over many years. Um, and it's you know it's part of the, net, the the normal course of things that we do get these these bumper years when bird numbers can build up again. Enjoy them while you got them, I reckon, Neil. <laughs> Absolutely. And people in and people in Ford are really you know lucky because they have mulligans and other people throw be etc. In that area have mulligans so nearby. So they are very fortunate uh, Canberran. Just delightful. Hey, thank you for sharing some of what you love about it, Neil. Really love it. No worries. And if people want to check out my website, I've got a website, neilhermes.com.au. I've got lots of stuff there. And I do bird walks and things. So people can check out my bird bird site as well. Um, and, and I think you've seen a copy of my book. We've talked about my book before as well. So, Indeed. If um, people want a uh, bit of a guide to what they can be seeing. Yep. Sure. Check out my website, neilhermes.com.au. Thank you. wonderful. Thank you, Neil. A great way to get out and um, explore Ford and Mulligan's Flat if you're looking for a bit of um, guidance thereof. But my goodness, as you hear from Neil Hermes, so much to see. He's president of the Canberra Ornithologists Group talking to us about the Mulligan's Flat Nature Reserve and, and sanctuary there because it virtually borders the suburb of Ford on three sides. I mean, what a treat for lovers of nature and citizens of Ford. If that's you, if you are a Fordian, Fordite, first of all, what do you call yourself? And what do you love about living in Ford? You can let me know on 1300 681 666, 1300 681 666.